Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Shireen and today I'm going to talk to you about a new law in Canada which is being implemented from 1st January 2023 and why I'm going to talk about it is uh, by the end you will realize by the end of this video you will realize that why I'm talking about this law. This law is very important in terms of for if you are thinking of immigrating to Canada, if you are already in Canada or if you are on any other status except Canadian citizen or permanent resident and thinking of buying a residential property. This, this law is basically been introduced to protect the interest and the bubble that you know has been in Canada about the housing and the housing of the local Canadian citizens and PR holders and especially the Canadian housing problem that was going on because of the high bubble. Now property in Canada, is, I'm, I'm sure all of you know, has been booming in the past two years since COVID and it has since then not gone down. The interest rates have been on a hike there have been so many interest hikes throughout the year which is beyond the expectation of a normal person so today i'm going to talk about this law which is the prohibition on the purchase of residential property by non-canadians so i am very briefly going to touch about the law what the key elements of it is why is it being implemented i've already told you what are the exemptions and what are the specific definitions now definitions in the sense are very important for you to understand the law if you want more details about it and if you want me to talk about it you can follow me on the insta channel and i can go live about it and we can discuss all your question query concerns there so Firstly, you need to understand that the law is only coming for a period of two years till now. It has been passed through a royal, uh, you know, a special procedure in which it is only implemented for two years. In two years, they feel that the bubble is going to come down and the Canadian property is going to be really affordable for Canadians. So that is the whole problem uh, under which it is revolving. Till July and August 2022, the government before implementing the law was taking comments from all the stakeholders and all the stakeholders were of the common point ki immigration ki se, if non-residents buying property ki se, koi China ke property hai, koi India ke property hai, uski se, Canadians ki affordability kam ho hai. so now I'm going to tell you who non-resident as per the law is first a non-resident is any person who is not a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident first definition second the person is a uh, it has incorporated a Canadian company, but the control is with the person who's outside. That company is also non-resident. Third, a company not incorporated under the laws of Canada. So, these three three major coverings are, and uh, it is also uh, it 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 it. It also has a special consultation paper attached to it. This means ki or thodi elaborated definitions hai. Now I'm gonna secondly tell you what a residential property is. Uh, residential property is any property that is you know unhone uh, square meter ki limit diye ki jisme metropolitan area. वो वाले एरियाज की रेजिडेंशियल प्रॉपर्टी जहां पे 100000 50000 से ऊपर के लोग रहते हैं सो फॉर एग्जांपल इफ यू इफ द एरिया इज से फॉर एग्जांपल टोरंटो टोरंटो ऑब्वियसली हैज अ पॉपुलेशन ऑफ 700000 प्लस पीपल सो नाउ दैट पॉपुलेट दैट एरिया इज कमिंग अंडर दिस डेफिनेशन सो द लॉज अप्लाई द लॉ अप्लाइज टू दैट पर्टिकुलर place or metropolitan area same as Burlington, Oakwell, uh, Vancouver you know all, throughout the congested areas so the, the law is very much applicable to wherever you are thinking of immigrating unless that you are not where you know there, there is no, no population population any, any province or any city population above 50,000 is under the radar the third, uh, the very important thing that I was going to tell you is about the residential property and I will define it for you. Residential property as per the law has been a detached house which has no more than three dwellings. So for example, it, this is one of the criteria. One house has a grandma house which is also called a main house and uh, you know where usually some people like to keep their guests or anybody and then there is also a garage which is separate. So three dwellings which is residential which is very much uh, uh, you know you can find it in the G 
GTA area, this kind of property, this is detached properties and this is very much there, so this is also covered. Second definition is a part of a building, that is for example a semi-detached. Semi-detached houses are which one wall is shared by another, so they are like one wall is uh, shared by the other uh, next neighborhood. The third is the condominium, if you have a unit in a condominium and remember the area is the metropolitan area, the limit that I told you. And any other property that comes up in that special regulation, that supporting regulation that is attached with it, any other property that comes under it. So now very important part of the law, not that the law is blanketly applied to everybody, there is very important exemption part of the law which is also uh, in their consultation paper which is attached to the law. The first is a temporary resident. Now you need to understand the definition of temporary resident as per the IR. PA Act, which is the Immigration Refugee Protection Act. So that act has defined temporary resident, any person who's coming to Canada, like a visitor, a worker, or a, a study permit holder. So obviously this law does not apply, this law does apply to visitors and visitors cannot. But when it comes to study permit holders, there is again a detailed discussion about that, wherein they have said that, okay, study permit holders, for example, need to cannot buy more than 500,000k of a house and they cannot uh, be less than five years old in Canada. So that five years of establishment in Canada, five years in Canada, they have to establish that through papers, through documentation and then become eligible to apply. So obviously earlier what was happening is that students across the globe were coming to Canada and they were bringing money from back home and they were just buying houses like it's a piece of cake so that affected the whole uh, system the whole uh, you know the whole uh, biosphere of the properties so, and the ecosystem of the real estate in Canada and that is why they have made certain exceptions and those exceptions are obviously not inclusive of everything so we can go and discuss more in details if you have any question query concern you can follow me on my social media handle and I do go live a lot of times wherein I discuss such topics the second is for example a temporary resident can also be a work permit for a work permit i can just give you a brief maybe because i know that information so i can just share it with my audience is that a work permit holder needs to show three years of income in canada and that is also not like a break a break uh, there should no, not be any gaps in the income there has to be some consistency which we can talk how documentation can be helped then the second thing is a refugee for example, you know, Canada is a very welcoming country for refugee crisis across the globe. We have had the Ukrainians, we have helped the Afghanis, we have helped Syrians, we have helped people from all sorts of persecution and we welcome them to Canada. And I personally think that Canada is a very welcoming country. So refugees who have turned into PR, refugees who are waiting and have done some hard work. But there are people who have been in Canada as refugee status holders since 9 to 10 years and still waiting for their um, for the day of the for the day their fate will be decided right but there are so many refugees which have become protected persons under the convention of un and they are also eligible to buy the property and they will not be considered as non-canadians the third exception is an individual who buys a property with his or her spouse and that spouse is a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident. So for example, uh, one, uh, one person is in Canada and he or she is a permanent resident and the, sp uh, the spouse is outside Canada or is inside Canada but is a non-resident that person is also allowed to and come in falling under the exemption category and can buy the property with his or her spouse because in Canada you know there is tenancy in common and there is uh, the other joint tenancy so there is there are two types of ownership you can have in Canada of a property usually spouses are always included and um, hence the exemption also applies to them so having said all of this I have given you a bird eye view of the whole cases of the whole uh, law and the law is effective since January first 2023 for two years so make sure that whatever immigration decision and why as an immigration lawyer I am very close to this topic is because I know people you know I talk to people people are my clients and they, when they when when I talk to them I know that one of the major plans they have is of buying a house buying a property so it's very important that we discuss such uh, important issues also which are not just uh, parallelly but which are also ancillary and very prime importance to our immigration uh, 
you know our, to your immigration journey and to our immigration clients so stay tuned for more such content and as i said that my youtube channel is now going to be more active with more updated information and uh, with obviously a personal connection that i've always had with my uh, with my audience and with some authentic legal information related to so many things that ace does uh, you can check the link in the description box we have now a real estate practice in dubai where in, in ua in fact wherein we help people uh, achieve some investments and golden visas and you know get the ROEs or the ROIs to that investment we also help in asset management now we help with tax planning and so uh, citizenship by investment programs so there are so many things that ace is now doing and we will discuss in details in further more blogs thank you and stay tuned